So normally we integrate with respect to x, but sometimes things are easier if we look at things in a different way. So this is what we have done before. We had these two curves. We had f of x equaling x squared and g of x equaling 2 minus x. The trouble is those curves intersect and we had to actually split this up into two separate sections and do two separate integrations. But we could also think of this in terms of y. If we look at y, the y values go from 0 to 1. And in that range, notice this function is always above or to the right of this function. There's no crossing in the range from 0 to 1 if we're thinking about y. So we can actually do this kind of thing. We can think of this instead of integrating with respect to x, we can integrate with respect to y. So how do we do that? Well, we have a very similar formula that we had for calculating the area with respect to x. We go from C to D instead of A to B just to keep things straight in our head, but of course they're just two constants. And we're still going to have U of Y minus V of Y dy. So this was just like F of X minus G of X dx. Now we have U and V in Y. So Y is now being treated as the independent variable, which is kind of a backwards way of thinking about it. You have to sort of twist that picture around in your mind clock, well, let's see, counterclockwise 90 degrees. So the only thing we have to watch out for is, again, to make sure that those curves don't cross in that range and that we pick the right function to be on top. So let's go through those steps. So the first thing we need to do is express these graphs in terms of functions of y. So we had y equals x squared. So instead of y equals x squared, we're going to solve for x. And when we do that, we find that x is equal to plus or minus square root of y using the square root property. But if we look at the graph, we're only really talking about the positive part of the square root of y. So we actually aren't going to be using the plus or minus. What we're going to do is just say that x is equal to positive square root of y. That's our first function. Our second function was y equals 2 minus x. Well, we called it g of x equals 2 minus x. So we have now solving for x, we have x is equal to 2 minus y. So we've got two functions now written in terms of functions of y. Now what do we have to do? We have to find the limits of integration. In this case, we were able to quickly look from the graph that the values of y changed from 0, 1. So when we're thinking about this, when we're thinking of x, we were thinking left and right. What values does x fall between? Now, however, we're thinking up and down. What values do y fall into? And in this case, it's 0 to 1. All right, so we've expressed the graphs as functions of y, we found our limits of integration. Just like we did before, we have to figure out which function is larger because we want to make sure that that is what we call u of y. So for when we are integrating with respect to x, the larger function was on top. When we're talking about dy, the larger function is more to the right than the other function. And now integrate. Notice I've changed g of x from 2 minus x to u of y of 2 minus y. And instead of f of x being, being x squared, we're calling it vy equals square root of y. And notice when we're thinking about things from left to right, this function, the green line, the u of y, is what's always to the right of the red line, so that means it is larger. Again, if you thought about this rotating, well, let's see if I can rotate this. All right, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I've just spent the last 10 minutes figuring out how to rotate this picture and then realized that 
the green line was blue when I went back to fix that. Anyway, this is what this graph looks like if we rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. And now it's much easier to see how that green line, that U of Y, is on top of the red line, which is V of Y. All right, let's just go ahead and integrate. Now we're going to go from 0 to 1. And I said u of y, the function on top, was 2 minus y minus v of y, which was square root of y. So we go ahead and do this integration. And just like before, we get the answer 5 over 6, which makes me very happy because if we had an answer that was different using a different method than we would have issues, wouldn't we? So it doesn't matter which way you do these. It's generally easier for our brains to use dx, but there are times that situations are really better served solving it in terms of dy.